Thank you, Patrice. Welcome to worship at Peace Presbyterian Church. I'm looking out my office window and it's beautiful. The trees are covered again with snow. Oh, it's nice to be at home today. And it's wonderful to be able to join you together with you in worship. I am here um, in my home and we're broadcasting through Zoom uh, with Patrice Meshke, our wonderful musician. Our liturgist for today is Teresa MD. And Kent Hall is our magician behind the scenes, but also he'll be leading um, the congregation's response in the response of readings. Um, Christy Artson is uh, doing closed captioning. So if you would like closed captioning and you're on Zoom, go to the bottom and click on that. On this second Sunday of Lent, welcome to worship. Let us begin with our gathering song, There is a Redeemer. join me in the call to worship. Happy are those who remember the poor and the needy, for the Lord will deliver them in times of trouble. The Lord preserves their lives and protects them so that one day they may prosper in the land. The Lord preserves them in their sickbed and ministers to them in their illness. The Lord is merciful and will raise up those who fall Blessed be the Lord our God forever. Amen. Amen. And now we will sing our first hymn, number 85. What wondrous love is this? What wondrous love is this? Oh, my soul, oh, my soul. What wondrous love is this? Again, every week we gather together as a group to unburden ourselves of sin, seek God's forgiveness, and rejoice in being made new. Join me in the confession of sin, renewer of life. You call us to embrace the new, but we prefer the old. You distance from the upheaval of it all. You seek to renew us in our image. We do all we can to cling in our old ways of life. We confess that we oppose your work in us. We resist being conformed to your will. Loving God, have mercy on us. Forgive us for clutching tightly when we would have let have us let go. Stir us by your spirit who makes all things new for the sake of your son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Hear now a declaration that is based upon the words of the prophet Isaiah. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. God is about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? Believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Alleluia and amen. Oh 
Why does God forgive us? God forgives us because God chooses to give us the glorious gift of grace. Let us share that gift with one another by passing the peace. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. With you. Well, welcome to worship again. And um, we, I hope some of you were able to pick up your um, bulletin booklets yesterday. Um, and if you did not pick up your bulletin booklet, um, please let the office know. If you okay. plan to pick them up, it'll be in that plastic bin outside the glass doors off the parking lot, or it can be mailed to you. Or if you have it, you want to just have it electronically by email, you can have it that way too. So let the office know if you have not received it, how you would like to receive it. We continue this week with uh, activities. Uh, the midweek activity is the on Wednesday night at seven o'clock, we'll have worship from seven to seven fifteen. And then at seven thirty, we have a discussion of the book Meeting Jesus Again for the First Time. New copies of that book um, had been delivered, and I guess the Unzies will tell us if there's still if there's still a few there. Um, they are there in that box. Uh, behind the church off the parking lot if yes. you'd like to have your own copy there are there are copies there there are copies there so feel free uh, to go pick one up yeah there's about three copies i think oh good so feel free to go pick one up if you'd like it's a really good book and um we will be <laughs> having our prayer meeting at 10 30 on tuesday morning as usual and our bible study at 10 30 on thursday morning as usual uh these are on zoom so it's a regular week, and um, we have some opportunities to be together. And now let us continue our worship of God with some special music. And uh, the music is Sam Schmeling singing Amazing Grace, but it is paired with Terry Cabista's photos. I think they're from, I know they're from Britain, the UK, and I think they're from Scotland and England. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kent will play this video. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see, t'was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed. Through many days snares I have already come. Tis grace hath brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. The promised good to me his word my hope secures he will my shield and portion be 
As long as life endures When we've been there Ten thousand years Bright shining as the sun We know last days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Terry. And thank you, Patrice, for putting together that slideshow. Our Prayer for Illumination was written by Howard Thurman, an African-American mystic and writer and a brilliant man. Um, he died in um, 1981, um, and he wrote this prayer. Lord, open unto me light for the darkness. Open unto me courage for my fear. Open unto me hope for my despair. Open unto me peace for my turmoil. Open unto me joy for my sorrow. Open unto me strength for my weakness. Open unto me wisdom for my confusion. Open unto me forgiveness for my sins. Open unto me love for my hates. Open unto me thyself for myself. Lord, Lord, open unto me. Amen. Teresa? Gospel of Mark 2, verses 1 through 12. When he returned to Capernaum after some days, it was reported that he was at home. So many gathered around that there was no longer room for them, not even in front of the door, and he was speaking the word to them. Then some people came, bringing to him a paralyzed man, carried by four of them. And when they could not bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him. And after having dug through it, they let down the man on which the paralytic plate met. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, son, your sins are forgiven. Now, some of the scribes were sitting there questioning in their hearts, why does this fellow speak in this way? It is blasphemy. Who can forgive sins but God alone? At once, Jesus perceived in his spirit that they were discussing these questions among themselves. And he said to them, why do you raise such questions in your heart? Which is easier? To say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say, stand up and take your mat and walk. But so that you may know that the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, stand up, take your mat, and go to your home. And he stood up and immediately took the mat went out before all of them so that they were all amazed and glorified God saying, we have never seen anything like this. We have never seen anything like this. Thank you, Teresa. That lovely story of Jesus's healing. Hear now from the prophet Isaiah in the 43rd chapter. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Wild animals will honor me and jackals and the ostriches. For I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people for the people whom I form for myself so they might declare my praise. 
Yet you do not call upon me, O Jacob, but you have been weary of me, O Israel. You have not brought me your sheep for burnt offerings or honored me with your sacrifices. I have not burdened you with offerings or wearied you with frankincense. You have not bought me sweet cane with money or satisfied me with the fat of your sacrifices, but you have burdened me with your sins. You have wearied me with your iniquities. I, I am he who blots out your transgressions for my sake. I will not remember your sins. May God bless to our understanding this very good word. There is a balm in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is a balm in Gilead to heal the sin sick soul. I love this hymn. And as far as I can remember, I have always loved it. Even though I had no idea where Gilead is or was, I looked it up finally. It's a place um, east of the Jordan in Palestine. Or I, I didn't know the biblical passage that just inspired it. Um, it's specifically from the book of Jeremiah, but also this passage of Isaiah makes reference to it. And I kind of knew it was a Negro spiritual that we called it back then. But I knew for sure that I loved it. Sometimes I feel discouraged and think my works in vain. But then the Holy Spirit revives my soul again. I love this hymn. It's foundational to my faith and I am not sure I could live without it. So this week, I found myself humming this hymn. Um, I, I had read the scripture passages for this morning. I had looked carefully at Isaiah 43, and I found myself uh, humming this hymn. Um, I'm, a, I'm a hummer. <laughs> Back in the day when we used to go to grocery stores, I'd be in the aisle there humming away and people come, would come up and talk to me and say, oh, you're having a good day. Well, I have this unconscious search engine of my soul and it brought up this song to me because I had been mulling over Isaiah 43. Behold, I am doing a new thing. It comes forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make waters in the wilderness. I will make rivers in the desert. These, both of these passages, um, the, 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 the reference to Isaiah 43 and also to the book of Jeremiah come from the same time in the life of the people Israel. It comes from the time of the Babylonian captivity. You may know it from the song by the waters of Babylon, where we lay down. How can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Behold, I am doing a new thing, God says. Or Isaiah says, using the voice of God. Listen, I'm doing a new thing. I'm a different kind of God. There is a balm in Gilead. This is an assurance that the Hebrew people whispered to themselves during a time when they had been enslaved by a conquering nation and taken into exile. And again, I look this up. The Babylonian captivity started on March 16th, 597 BC. And this hymn is exactly appropriate to our passage, as the prophet Isaiah wrote during the Hebrews experience of the Babylonian captivity. Um, during this historical period where Isaiah and Jeremiah come from, the Babylonians were preparing to violate the Hebrew holy places for treasure and dishonoring their dead. And the exiled Jews are forced to live in a far country that's what Jeremiah 8, 19 says. They wondered what they had done to deserve this. 
It is the most desperate and despondent time in all of Israel's history. And the chapter in Jeremiah ends with three rhetorical questions. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? Two millennia later, that's 2000, precisely beginning 2,216 years later, for that in 1619, African people began to be imported into America. African people whose tribes had been conquered were taken to, into exile in America, starting in these, starting in 1619. These African people found themselves in a strange land. And they, like the Hebrews, took up the same theme of exile and deliverance. They are the ones who made this song, There is a Bomb in Gilead, responding with hope in the face of hopelessness, showing courage in the face of despair. The theologian Howard Thurman, who I read his prayer for illumination, in discussing the refrain of the spiritual, he says, the slave caught the mood of this spiritual dilemma and with it did an amazing thing. For the, the, he straightened out the question mark in Jeremiah's sentence into an exclamation point. There is a bomb in Gilead. Here is the note of creative triumph. It is the same triumph that Isaiah proclaims when he speaks in the voice of God. Behold, I am doing in the, a new thing. It springs forth. Do you not perceive it? First, the Hebrews in Babylon and then enslaved African people in America proclaim that we are not forsaken. For God is doing a new thing, making waters in the wilderness and will rivers in the desert. There is a bomb in Gilead. There is a new thing about to happen. There is a place to be healed. You will be brought home. There is hope. No matter how awful things become, God has the creativity to make a way. The love for God's very own people, the Hebrews, the enslaved Africans, and yes, even us, God will save us, make a way, a rescue, a deliverance. And the conclusion of our passage for Isaiah 43 says, well, why does God do this? Why will God do this? It's not because we deserve it, not because we have earned it, not because we have accumulated enough brownie points or frequent flyer miles. God saves us not because we need it, because that we are rescued. We are saved because that is what God does. Look at the last passage of the Isaiah passage. I blot out your transgressions for my sake. I do it, God says, because that is what I do for my own sake. It's like God can't resist it because a saving God has to save. That's the new thing. When this, the, the Hebrews, the the, the, the Hebrew vision of God arose in the context of the Near East. It was completely different from the other religions of the region. While the Hebrews' neighbors, such as the Babylonians and the Egyptians, had lots of gods who had to be cared for and placated, the Hebrews had an entirely different kind of God, one who intervenes in history who does not need humans to care for God, but for God's own sake needs to care for humans. The prophet Isaiah points us out, the human side of the equation has been remiss. 
you did not call upon me, O Jacob, God reminds us. You haven't done your sacrifices or offering or given frankincense. And God gives a whole long list. You've not brought me sweet cane with money or satisfied me with the fat of your sacrifices. And then goes on to say what we've done and said, which is to burden God with our sins and wearied God with our iniquities. And what is God's response? To blot out our transgressions, not for our sake, but for God's sake, because this is who I am. I will not remember your sins. This kind of God had never before been seen or known among human beings one that did not need to be serviced. Now, it's true. God does give us assignments. Um, in the Torah, there were sacrifices and often offerings and obedience and religious obligations. But what is extraordinary is that even if we don't do our homework, we pass the course. In our Bible discussion on Thursday, last Thursday in the morning, my mother-in-law, a retired professor in Atlanta who taught for 40 years, proclaimed, God didn't even take attendance. We get credit, not for anything we do, but because that's what God does. I will blot out your transgressions for my sake. It's been a long, dark night. It has been cold here in Minnesota. I tell Jane and Jim and Martha and Seal, it's been cold. But for all of us, COVID-19 has just about done us in. Half a million people have died in the United States and in March, we will have been in this lockdown for an entire year. And we'll be talking about the personal, psychological, historical, economic, social, and spiritual consequences of this year for a very long time. But we've caught a glimpse of the light at the end of the tunnel. The dark night may, may, be over. There is a bomb in Gilead. There is a vaccine appointment for you, even though it might, not, might feel like you're never going to get one. Children will go back to school. We will again gather in church. We don't know exactly when, but we know it will happen. As likely, as unlikely as it is, that there will be water in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Let us remember that God's deliverance is not limited to bringing exiles home. There is in these words a profound sense and a hope for even a better world a more peaceful world in which even the jackal and the ostrich will honor the ecological transformation brought by God's watering of the desert. But there is no need to limit God to past mercies. God is an ever-present help, to quote the old hymn. The good news needs to be heard every day the life-giving word of forgiveness and being made whole and rescue and salvation cannot be proclaimed in the past tense. It was wonderful when it was announced yesterday, but it's even better when it's pronounced today. We need to hear this good news afresh every day. This passage from Isaiah is uh, Nancy Kurth's um, uh, featured song. 
She has been bringing this to our Thursday night Bible study and our Thursday morning Bible study it has been bringing it to our prayer group on Tuesday morning, reminding us of this new thing. She made me a little thing for my desk. Do not remember the former things nor consider the things of hold. It springs forth, do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Indeed, that is the good news. There is a balm in Gilead to heal the sin sick soul. Amen. This time in our service, we share our joys and concerns. Eileen writes prayers for a good friend, John Similink, who is going through chemotherapy for non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. From Dean and Karen to everyone, prayers for my friend and neighbor, Blaine, whose wife has dementia and falls, fails to recognize only him of her immediate family of six. She even knows all her neighbors. She knows even all her neighbors. He continues to be an unwelcome stranger in his own home. From Robin and Dave, while COVID numbers are improving, people are still dying of this disease. Please pray for those who have lost loved ones from this awful disease and those who are fighting for their lives still. And from, again, from Robin and Dave, for anyone 65 or older who's not gotten a vaccine appointment, um, email her or call her and she'll give you her updated list of places to contact. Um, with pharmacies like Thrifty White, Walmart, Sam's, and Hy-Vee, um, joining the, the group, access to the vaccine is improving. In fact, on month tomorrow, I'm driving with a friend to Alexandria, Virginia, because she was able to find an Minnesota. appointment with Thrifty White. And, oh, that's a good lead in. Patrice, um, she's going, uh, Patrice, uh, please tell us about the vaccine connector. Yeah, um, I had received an email recently. It's from the Minnesota Department of Health, and it tells about Minnesota's COVID vaccine connector. And if Kent will pull up a slide, um, what I did was just pull information from that website. And this is not every last detail, but it's nice because it kind of gives you um, the layout that Governor Walls just talked about this week. And in the link, uh, I put the link into the chat function. So if you want to go and check that out, it's just sort of a clearinghouse. You can sign up to be notified when a vaccine is available, um, gives you locations and all sorts of information. Because like Robin has said, uh, no matter how, when, where, or what, you get your shot wherever you can get it. So it's just kind of like one more resource. Thank you. And if Kent, if you want to pull that down, I have got one more thing I wanted to share with you also. Um, we were laughing during our uh, meeting on Saturday because we thought um, I had a kind of a cold weather thing that I wanted to share. And I thought, I think the time has passed because by golly, it's, you know, we are into spring. But when you look outside, and see what it's <laughs> like, uh, maybe this is very seasonable. So I just wanted to share this with you and show you what it is. It's something that Robin and uh, uh, Eileen Bengry had passed along. <laughs> Praise God from whom all blizzards flow. Praise Him at 35 below. Praise Him in snow drifts 10 feet deep. Praise Him though winter makes us weep.
Very good. <laughs> <laughs> so let us <laughs> Amen. Yes. Yeah. Let us then uh, join to get, uh, let's uh, get, would you mute people? And we will now join together in the prayers of the people. God, our creator, you have made all things in your wisdom and in your love, you save us. And so we pray for all of creation. We, over, we ask for you to overthrow evil powers and to right that which is wrong. Feed and satisfy those who thirst for justice. You have called us, gracious God, to be the church of Jesus Christ. Keep us one in faith and service, breaking bread together and proclaiming and doing your good words, your good news for the whole world. We pray for peace. Eternal God, you sent us a savior to break down the dividing walls of hostility and to put down greed and pride and anger, which turn nation against nation, race against race, person against person. Speed the day when all wars will end. We pray for our enemies. O God, whom we cannot love unless we love our neighbors, Remove hate and prejudice from us and all peoples so that your children, we, may be reconciled with those we fear, resent, or threaten and live together in your peace. We pray for those who govern us. Mighty God, sovereign over the nations, all the nations, direct those who make, administer, and judge our laws the President of the United States, Joe Biden, and others in authority among us, that guided by the, your wisdom, they may lead us in the way of righteousness. And we pray for world leaders, eternal ruler, hope of all the earth, give vision to those who serve the United Nations and to those who govern in all countries that with goodwill and justice, they will take down barriers and draw us together in one new world in peace. Merciful God, you bear the pain of the world. Look with compassion for those who are sick, those whom we have mentioned in our prayer concerns. And we pray for those who are sick with COVID-19 and other diseases, cheer them by your word so that they may not be alone. We pray for those who sorrow. God of comfort, stand with those who sorrow that they may be sure that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come shall separate them from your love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. God of compassion, bless us and those we love, our friends and families, that drawing close to you, we may be drawn closer to each other. Mighty God, whose word we trust, whose spirit enables us to pray, accept our requests and further those which will bring about your purpose for the earth through Jesus Christ, who rules over all things. We pray the Lord's prayer saying, our father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Back in the day, we pass the offering plate now during the time of the offering. And we continue to support God's work through our offerings, our tithes, our gifts. We express our gratitude to God for God's generosity and we are thankful for the generosity of the people of this church. 
Let us now sing our doxa, our praise, our doxology. Blessed are you, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Amen. And we sing our last hymn, what last the second verse of what wondrous love is this. And to the Lamb I will sing, I will sing. And let us now receive our benediction. Let us stay just right where we are, but let us go into our regular lives, sharing the love of God, proclaiming the good news of the undeserved love and salvation given to us all. May the blessing of God Almighty, the compassion of Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>